A group of Michigan high school students has caught the eye of some computer execs by creating a wearable computer named Ralph. Heading up the team is recent graduate Alex Fisher. Along with him are fellow grads Mike Feldkamp and Mike Sasek, Brandon Gein, who will be a sophomore this fall, and Pat Murray and Matt Fanto, who will be juniors. Good morning. This is the biggest group we've had here in a long time. <laughs> Good morning, man. Tell me, Alex, what's the idea behind this? What about a wearable computer? Well, the point behind a wearable computer is that it's a form of computing that's uh, more, more convenient for the user. Instead of having to go out of your way, say, with a laptop, where you, you would need to put a laptop down, open up the screen, uh, turn it on. With a wearable computer, it's already on and it's already right in front of you. I mean, a lot of people think that in the last 20 or 10 years, the laptop is about as convenient as it gets. You're going to take it one step beyond that. Yeah, that's what we want to help do. Let's take a look because he's wearing the computer, or at least parts of the computer right there. It's First of all, we have to know it's a little cumbersome in some yep. areas. How does it work? Well, basically, with the wearable computer, you view the image that the computer is giving by the glass tron that he's wearing on his head. Now that glass tron uh, shows an image in front of his eyes where he can see the computer screen, but he can also see through it. So right now, as you look at me, you can see, you can be opening up windows, you can be surfing the, the net and see Katie, Al, and me at the same time. Exactly. Now what's the application, what's the practical application for that? Well, obviously, it's easier to use and more convenient. Now there's other parts of the computer that make it easier to use and more convenient also. Okay. And that would be the uh, input device, which is a Twiddler. It's made by a company called HandyKey. That is your version of what would be a mouse on keyboard a normal... Keyboard and mouse. The right. keyboard and the mouse? Right, combined. Okay, now how do you use it? Well, uh, Mike actually found this on the web. Why don't you go ahead and tell him uh, about well, it? Well, it's like playing guitar, basically. You just chord keys, different combinations, to get, uh, you know, different letters, and then you can hold a button down and just move your wrist and, the, uh, and it'll control the mouse. Now how come you don't have, I see wires connecting the headset to the mouse sort of thing right. and everything else, but you don't have a wire like a telephone wire that's connecting that's you right. to, the, to the internet. Yeah, basically there's an antenna on the side of the computer where when we're at, at school, because we built it you know, for an educational type environment, when we're at school, it will actually send a signal to a small little device we have sitting by the computers and it, we're always connected to the internet. Now, one of the other features here is while you're wearing that device and looking at us and surfing the net at the same time, you can hook this up so that other people can log on to the net and see and hear exactly what you're seeing in real time. That's yes, right. that's right. With the camera on top of the glass tron, um, it will take the image, it will give it to the computer, and then the computer will send it over the network where anyone in the world can see it. Which raises some interesting questions because if you see him coming down, first you think he looks a little strange, but you should also know that what you're doing could be seen live on the internet, yeah. and that's one of the reasons they created these t-shirts. <laughs> right. Mm. Basically, we get the idea for uh, this t-shirt from the creator of the, creator of the wearable computer, who was Steve Mann. He, he's up at the University of Toronto these days, I believe. And this is basically a warning. Yeah, basically it's for ethical purposes. You know, if, you, if you're going to tape somebody, uh, you should let them know that you're taping them. Yeah, instead of Jenny Cam, Cam it could be Matt Cam. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. Meanwhile, what is the practical application for this, you guys? I mean, why would you want to have all this stuff on yeah. you? Well, I think... Go ahead and take that. They're, uh, and, I mean, you've got to think about this, really, as more of a prototype. They're getting incredibly small. And now, I mean, even in the workplace, uh, uh, foremen on construction sites use them to uh, organize, you know, uh, uh, labor and building materials. Uh, Boeing is using them in wiring the airplanes. So instead of having like a schematic on like on the floor, and then you, you look at the schematic and you look up and you you know, like you, cr you connect the wire with this, you look at the plane itself and the wearable computer overlays the schematic, and so you don't have to look down. You guys are brainiacs, time. and you're only in high school. Some have graduated, others are sophomores right. and juniors. He's Get ready. Like the future Bill Gates. We're going to be buying their stock in about <laughs> five years. <laughs> hey guys, congratulations! Thank you very much. For joining Thank us. you. We appreciate it. Good luck to you. That does it for us on this Tuesday morning. Are you watching me? No. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Well, that, that opens up all sorts of I know, things. exactly. <laughs> Katie brought up an interesting question. How much distraction is it to be looking at the, the computer screen at the same time, say, walking down a busy street? Would you feel comfortable doing that here in the city? Well, I mean, like I said, you can well, it's actually... it's not a very good fashion statement. No. <laughs> no. Not yeah. You can see through it. It is transparent, so you can see 
both what's in front of you at the same time and the actual computer image. But can so you really hear what's going on outside? Yeah. You can? Right. What are those earphones doing? These now? are, this is just a headset. It just takes place of the speakers of the computer. So, so you can still you can hear voices and such around you. But it's obviously not recommended to be doing anything you know, stressful or anything like that while wearing this. You can't be driving. It's a controlled environment. Yeah, yeah, except, right. except yeah. that even that will change in the future. Mm -hmm. You were saying the man who developed yeah, uh, it, there like, were sensors on it? Yes, yeah, I believe Steve Mann, he created one where if he's right, he was, were, would wear this thing riding down the streets of you know, Cambridge on a bike, and it would sense objects behind him. And the closer they got, like the more pressure we put in his back, so he'd know there was something behind him. And then him. there's a little laser that zaps him. Exactly. <laughs> you know. And he has a grenade launcher that comes exactly. out of it. What, what, what's the reaction based from you know computer companies? What 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 type of response are you getting to this? Well, a lot of companies are showing interest in how you know high school students can build a computer like this, and they they uh, have talked to us about possible internships or jobs in the future. Or if we want to go to college, even after that, they're ready to. Can to you stand up and just sure. to no so we can see this whole thing together? How heavy is the whole thing? Um, all together, maybe four or five pounds. Uh -huh. see. So yeah, basically, the actual computer is this case right here, which we didn't build because they don't manufacture them yet. And then we have another case here, which actually holds the batteries for it. Now it's a big case, really. Though the batteries are probably the size, maybe this this front section here, mm -hmm. uh, and then. Of course, you've got the twiddler and the glass trunk. But all together, it, it is kind of heavy right now, but it's only a prototype. And right. we've got plans to make it faster, more efficient. Like the cochlear implants, yeah, exactly. how they've gotten so right. much smaller. Right. And more Are there input friendly. stuff? you got disk drives and stuff on this, or is it just? Well, since we have a wireless network, we can use those on another computer. Mm -hmm. You see, foresee a time where in that little hand piece there, you can also have a cell phone and people can just use it as a complete communications tool? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, we could already, we could already make this uh, have the capabilities of cell phones. Can you play Doom on this? <laughs> yes, yes, you sure could. Cool.